Hey guys, it's Shreen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make tech house like Luke Van Dyke. As usual, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all of that from this video. It's available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, here we go. So this is the loop from the intro, we're at 126 BPM, pretty standard tech house tempo. The first sound we have here is this lead riff which sounds like this. So here's the MIDI for this. It's really simple. It's just two notes. You can see if I fold this, it's just G sharp and A. And then what's happening is we have, so we have this G sharp one here, and then it goes up to the A two, so A an octave up. And then here at the end, it's just A in the same octave as the G sharp. <laughs> So yeah, really simple pattern. This is the type of riff you'd hear in one of these style of tracks. You can hear both the bass and the lead are playing the same riff, so you just get that super simple, clean, powerful groove going on. And yeah, for the sound with this one, it's made with analog. So this one is just actually one saw wave. You can see, there it is. And that's going into a bandpass filter. And so there's three things happening that are making this sound. One, the frequency on the bandpass filter is being automated. So you can see, and here. That's just like opening and closing over time and we're getting this, this movement in the sound. So that's the first thing. The second thing here is I have key tracking on. You can see this key knob here is set to 1.99. And so what this is, is if you think about key tracking, it's the same as like if I play a low note on the keyboard. It's going to play a low note with the synth. And then if I play a high note. It's going to play a high note with the synth. It's the same thing. It's just putting that onto the filter frequency. So if you play a low note, you can hear the filter will be more closed. And then as you open it up, or as you play higher notes, then the filter will be more open. And this makes it sound a lot more dynamic because we have in this MIDI pattern, you can see it's bouncing up an octave from the first to the second note. So you get that like very dynamic sound as a result of this. So that's the second thing. And then the, the last thing that's making this happen here is I have an envelope on the filter. So that's just making it pluck. You can see the shape of that is like this. So it's just well, just like a quick sort of plucky thing happening. Uh, yeah, so you put those three different movements together. The automation and the filter frequency, the key tracking, and then the filter envelope. And that's how you get this sound. And then we just have the amp envelope set like this. And then I've got a bit of vibrato. And then that's it for inside of the synth. From there, we just have a bit of chorus and some echo and reverb. These are all three sort of spreading the sound out, giving it a bit of space. You can see I've got the ping pong setting turned on on the echo, so it's giving you that wider sort of stereo image there. And then we just have a bit of drum bus, which fattens this up. There's without that. And then with it. So you can hear that's pretty important for making the sound fat and really full. And then finally, I just have a compressor side chaining it to the kick, and that's it for the lead. From there, we have the bass line. So the bass line is really simple. It's the same as what I showed you with that lead riff. So yeah, just you know, get them playing the same thing. And it's making the track really simple and really powerful and really focused because we're just focusing around that one riff. And yeah, for the sound with this one, it's made with operators. So this is a pretty standard sort of FM pluck sound. This is kind of different from the type of FM bass you would usually use in Tech House. You can see what's happening here is it's three sine waves and then they're just FMing each other and then the secret here is the second one being tuned, turned up to plus three on the chorus pitch. So here's that at the normal setting. 
This is more like your standard sort of tank half space. But then you put the course pitch up and you put it in a higher octave and then you get this more sort of like, it's almost more like a deep half space. You know, so it's sort of plucky FM donk bass. And then what's happening here is we have that going through a low pass filter. So here's the that type of low pass. And then with it, the low pass is really subtle, but it just gives it a little bit more of like a pluck. So the sound's a bit tighter and it's gonna fit a bit better into the track. And yeah, and then after that we just have first this chorus and then this utility. So these two are working together. Here is without them. And then with them. So as you can hear, this bass has a lot of stereo width, even though it is a bass line, you know, typically you want your low end to really just be mono. It helps to have like the mid range and the highs in the bass to be stereo. And so what I've done here is I put this chorus on, which as you can hear, it creates the width, but then the low end gets messed up by that. So then I just put a utility after that, and then we have the bass mono turned on. So now every frequency below 262 hertz is going to be mono. And then we still get this way, the mid range and that low mid range to be stereo and to be widened. But then we can still get that the really fat mono lows like we want. Cause that's the thing, is like if you want a sound to be powerful and full, you want it to be mono actually. Like the lower a sound is and the more like powerful you want it to be, the more mono you want it to be because that's just where it is. Like the impact and the hit of a sound and the fullness is really happening down the center and then the stereo stuff is just sort of like extra on top of that. So that's the idea behind this. And then we have some drum bus, which you can see is fattening it up. This brings out the chorus a little bit, and it also makes it kind of punch a bit more. Because I have that transient snob turned up. Then we have this EQ, which is cutting at 100 hertz to make a bit of room for the kick, boosting the lows a little bit. And then I just have a compressor, which is side chaining this to the kick. This one's a bit heavier than the lead side chain was, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, it's just on there. And that's it for the bass line. And then we have the kick. And yeah, this is just sort of like your standard, sort of punchy, 909-esque kick. What's happening here is I have this one, and then it's going through a bit of drum bus. And then I have this utility as well. Here's without this. And then with it. So you can hear without it. It's not like the most obvious. But there's this sort of weird stereo thing happening, and it goes back to what I was saying before, is like, you know, this still does work, even though it is in stereo, but when we put it in mono, you just get a lot more punch. And it fits a lot better into the mix, so I'm just converting it to mono there. And yeah, then I have the kick and the bass in a group together, just going through a bit of saturation. So here's without that. And then with it, you can hear just that last little thing to give this, these sounds some punch and really glue them together and make them fit together in the mix. Then we have this hi-hat. So this is just being made with two layers. We have this tambourine and then the open hi-hat. And the idea here is this open hi-hat is really most of what you're hearing. But then you can hear that tambourine in there. It's just adding the high end. So if we turn that off, just the open hi hat on its own doesn't quite work. But then you combine that with the bright highs of this tambourine. And yeah, so that's why we have those two layered together. And this would even be a thing like, you know, maybe your track would start like this in the intro with just the tambourine and then we get to the main part and then you bring in the open hi-hat and then those two just have a little bit of drum bass on them together 
to kind of make it sound more like just one hi-hat and also to just make them a bit fatter and punchier. Here is without these. And then with them. So you can hear, yeah, just kind of like... You know, putting into this little bit of saturation is going to make a big difference for just making these sound like one hit and gluing them together. Then after that, we have the shaker, which sounds like this. So this is just this little shaker sample here. I took this one. You can see I shaped it a little bit with the fade in and the fade out here on the simpler. And then I just have this high pass filter on there. And yeah, so this is just kind of shaping this into more of like a clean shaker without that like in the mid-range. And the main thing to keep in mind with this one, you can see I've also got a little bit of saturation on there. But the main thing with this one is just like how it's playing. You know, a lot of times you'd have your shaker just doing a straight chick -chick 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 the whole way through. But the fact that this one just kind of like that, you know, like there's a little bit of space. It's really the main thing, just making sure your shaker isn't just playing the whole way through and that it's got, you know, something a little bit more uh, interesting going on. And yeah, then we have the clap which sounds like this. So this is just sort of your standard house clap, you know, I've just got it going through a bit of drum bus. To beef it up a little bit, the main thing with this one is just like the type of clap you choose. Like, I've noticed it's more of these sort of like smaller, kind of just quick punchy claps like this. And then there's without the drum bus. And with it, you can hear that drum bus is just giving it the extra little push. To really sit in the mix. And then the last thing that we have here is this percussion. So you can hear this stuff is actually really small. This is more like some minimal house percussion. But what's happening is we just have like a few different ones. I'll play them with the hi hat and the clap so you can hear what's going on. So we have this sort of like. So it's just kind of like some simple percussion, mostly just hitting on the upbeats, and then we just have this this little one in here that's adding a little bit of groove. But yeah, this is a nice way to just add some subtle percussion like this. You know, it's not like a whole lot of stuff. But it just adds that little bit of background movement and a little bit of kind of extra background stuff. So that your track isn't just going to be like main hi-hats, clap, kick, bass, and lead. There's something a little bit more to this. In the groove and just with making everything kind of fit together. And yeah, then we just have those all three in this group here. You can hear on their own. Just going through a bit of drum bus and a high pass. So you heard with those. Here is without those. So you can see these effects are really subtle, but they're just adding a little bit of an extra edge to the sounds and really making these percussions sound full and proper in the track. So the drum bus here is hitting pretty hard. That's just beefing everything up. And then this high pass is just making sure there isn't going to be any low end in there that could get in the way of the bass. Because, like, if we turn that off... You know, sometimes these little percussions can have, like, a... Kind of like that, like, deep low end thing in there. And that can get in the way of the bass. But just cutting that out, make sure it's not going to get in the way. I 
uh, yeah, so that is me for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples, MIDI, presets, all of that stuff from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check it because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.